President, I was pleased uh, that the Senate unanimously agreed yesterday to proceed to conference on the 2021 National Defense Authorization Act. The NDAA, NDAA is one of the most important pieces of legislation that we pass here every year. It's the bill that authorizes funding for our troops and lays out our defense priorities. Like the last two NDAAs, this year's bill focuses on restoring military readiness and ensuring that our nation is prepared to meet threats posed by major powers like Russia and China. In November of 2018, the Bipartisan National Defense Strategy Commission released a report warning that our readiness had eroded to the point that we might struggle to win a war against a major power like Russia or China. And the Commission noted that we would be especially vulnerable if we were ever called on to fight a war on two fronts. Over the past two years, we've made real progress on restoring military readiness, but we still have more work to do. And this year's National Defense Authorization Act continues our investment in ensuring that our military is prepared to meet current and future threats in any domain. Of course, no matter what weapons or tanks or planes we have, our greatest military resource will always be our men and women in uniform. And this year's NDAA invests in improving the quality of life for our military members and their families. The bill supports a 3% pay raise for our troops, and it builds on previous measures to improve military health care and housing. It will also provide support for military families in areas like child care and professional development for military spouses. Mr. President, as I said, this bill is one of the most important measures that we pass every year. And we need to make sure that we pass the final version of this legislation before Christmas. Failing to pass this legislation would send the wrong message to our troops and our allies and to our adversaries. While this may not be a perfect bill, it contains a lot of important provisions to rebuild our military and give our men and women in uniform the tools that they need to defend our nation. We need to pass it as soon as possible. Mr. President, yesterday afternoon, Mike Enzi delivered his farewell address. And while Mike has more than earned his retirement over a long and dedicated career in Washington and in Wyoming, we're going to miss him here in the United States Senate. Mike is an accountant and spent years as a small businessman, and he brought that background and common sense to Washington, D.C. with him. In many ways, he's been the conscience of the Senate on spending issues, reminding us that we don't have an unlimited amount of money to spend and that every dollar we add to the debt is a burden that will have to be met by our children and grandchildren. As chairman of the Budget Committee, he has passed budgets with an eye to restraining spending and lessening the burden that we place on future generations. His 2018 budget also paved the way for the landmark Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which reformed America's outdated tax code, helped create jobs and opportunities for workers, and put more money in the pockets of American families. Mike is an outstanding legislator, and he's also one of the finest human beings that you will ever meet. I think all of us have benefited from his thoughtfulness at one time or another. I remember when I was experiencing heel pain a few years ago with an ailment called plantar fasciitis, and I mentioned it to Mike because he was a shoe salesman and a shoe store owner. Well, it wasn't more than a few days later where Mike comes to me with a, some heel inserts to put into my shoes, which I might add helped a lot. Obviously, he had a lot of experience uh, through the years dealing with people with foot issues. But it was typical of Mike Enzi, thoughtful and practical, down to earth. In business, as everyone knows, the customer comes first, and Mike has brought that attitude to his 24 years here in the United States Senate. As a shoe salesman, he put his customers first, and as a senator, he always put his constituents and the American people first. He's never forgotten how to help people. He's never forgotten where he comes from, and he has worked hard every day that he's been here in the United States Senate to make life better for the people of Wyoming and for American citizens. He's an outstanding colleague and a friend, and I will miss his wisdom and expertise and his great fishing stories. Mike, I wish you the very best of everything in your retirement. I'm glad you'll have more time to spend with Diana and the kids and grandkids and more time to enjoy your beloved state, home state of Wyoming. While no state 
will ever compare to South Dakota in my book. I've got to say that Wyoming is spectacularly beautiful, and I'm glad you'll be able to be there now on more of a full-time basis. But you will be missed here, and I want to thank you for your service and your friendship. May God bless you and your family in your retirement. Mr. President, I yield the floor. And I